and mighty are you, Jesus, glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, we lift our hands in worship, we magnify your holy name. Praise the Lord, your friend and pastor James Timbiti of Precious Faith Church, Eldoret. And we've been talking about the basics of our Christian faith. We've been able to look at so far five of them. And today we move on to the sixth one. And the five are number one, the need for you to acknowledge that you're a sinner, separated from God, condemned to hell. Two, your need of being born again. Three, the fact that you cannot save yourself. And four, the provision that Jesus has made available for us. And five, your need to repent so that you may by faith accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We've dealt with that at length. And now we move on to number six. Today is the day to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Today is the day to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Why today? Because in essence... Tomorrow will be today when we get to tomorrow. But you can never go back to yesterday. But the truth is, yesterday was today when it was happening. So in other words, you only get to live today. Every moment God gives you, you only get to enjoy it once. And once it's gone, it's gone. Once it's no longer there, I want for you to know when it's gone, it is gone. And that's why it's important for us to realize the power of of the moment, the power of the days that God gives us. It's not time for us to procrastinate. Let me think about it. Let me take some time. And the moment you begin to take some time, the enemy steals you in the process of thinking. And at the end of the day, you never ever get to commit because you did not realize the power of the moment. There are people who got all just procrastinating. There's, they are talking about uh, good old days and then they are talking about a better tomorrow. So when things are better, when the rain is not raining, we'll give our lives to Christ. Oh, when uh, I've enjoyed my youth, when I'm becoming old, I give my life to Christ. I want for you to know this, that the good old days were boring days when they were happening. But today you look back and you're like, oh, I long for those good old days. But when those good old days were happening, you really didn't enjoy them. Today is the day of your salvation. Let's go back to the Bible and see what the Bible has got to say about that. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 6 and verse number 2. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse number 2. The Bible says, For he says, In the time of favor, of an assured welcome, I have listened to and heeded your call. And I have helped you on the day of deliverance, the day of salvation. Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome and acceptance of you from God. Behold, now is the day of your salvation. I like the last part of it. He says, behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome. At this point in time, heaven has its hands wide open. It is wide open. It is a total open invitation from heaven to you. It is saying, now. You are welcome. Now is the time for acceptance. God wants you now. God is welcoming you now. The invitation will not be there forever. But at least you have a chance to accept the call and to accept the invitation and to indicate that you're coming. Amen. And so the Bible says, Behold, now is the day of your salvation. Behold, now is the day of your salvation. How I pray that you'll answer the call, that you'll heed to the call, that you'll turn around and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation to come and for your salvation to be complete in the name of Jesus. So when the Bible says today, I hope you understand what he's basically saying there. Because if you fail 
to understand that, you begin to think today uh, might be tomorrow. You begin to justify the procrastinating tendencies that most of us have and stuff like that. And that will not work well for you. The book of Isaiah, I'm reminded of the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65. And verse number one, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 65, verse number one, a very interesting verse and a very interesting read indeed. The Bible says the following. It says, I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that has not called my name. I spread out my hands all day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. The point there being, the hands of the Lord, according to Isaiah 65, verse 1 and 2, is that God's arms are open. His posture is a welcoming posture. Heavens are ready to respond to your cry more than you're willing to cry. Heaven is ready to welcome you more than you're willing to show up. I mean, when a place is good, you wait to be invited. If today the president of the Republic of Kenya gave me an invitation to state house, I will not wait a minute. I'll be there. Why? Because a big man has called me to uh, a grand place. I would want to go. Now, think about it that way. And uh, think about not just the president of Kenya who is on a five-year limit term or ten-year limit. I mean, we are talking about not just the president of the world, the creator of the universe has given you and I an invitation. I have answered yes to that invite. Will you answer yes to the invitation of God? I pray you do. Here's another scripture for you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 3 and in verse number 7 and 8. Hebrews 3, 7 and 8. The Bible says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as happened in the rebellion of Israel and in their provocation and embitterment of me in the day of testing in the wilderness. The Bible says today, if you will hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. Because the Bible says the children of Israel, they hardened their hearts. They were in an edge and it was called an edge of rebellion. They rebelled against God. They provoked God. They embittered God against them. The Bible says don't follow that example. Today you have an invitation. Today God wants to work with you. Today God wants to roll out his plan for you. Today God wants to implement that which he had in mind for you when he created you. Today God wants to redeem you. God wants to bring you back on track. You were lost but God wants you found. You were broken but God wants you healed. You were sick and unwell but God wants you whole. God wants to bring you to a place of wholeness but it is all based on whether you say yes to his call or not. It's important that you say yes to God today. Point number seven on what I will call the basics of the Christian faith, an introduction, is we need to call on the Lord in order to be saved. And that is why I'm going to ask you to call on the Lord now to save you from hell and to give you eternal life. One thing is for sure, my friend, without God, you are going to hell. And hell is real. Don't be deceived. The only problem with hell is that you won't know that it's real until you get there. You know, you won't really have an assurance it's real until you get there. And once you get there, there is no coming back. I would rather play on the safe side. I'm not asking you to really change a lot of things. I'm basically asking you to allow for Jesus to save you. Let him save you from you. Let him save you from uh, the ways of this world. Let him save you from the wicked ways of the world. Let Jesus save you. He is inviting you today. And his only ex uh, answer and his only expectation from you is just say yes. Only believe and he takes over from there. Why do I say so? The book of Romans again. Chapter number 10 in verse number 9. I'm going to read again to verse number 13. The Bible says, Because... If you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe are here to entrust him and rely on the truth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Not you might be, not you can be, not you may, no, it is you will be saved. For, verse 10, with the heart a person believes 
and he's made righteous. And with the mouth, confession is made. Somebody declares openly and speaks up freely his faith and confirms his own salvation. The scripture says, no man who believes in him, who adheres to and relies on and trusts in God will ever be put to shame or will ever be disappointed. No one, for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is Lord over all of us and he generally bestows his riches upon all who call upon him. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Allow me to summarize what I've been saying in these three videos to just help you understand. Romans chapter number 3 and in verse number 23, the Bible says, All have sinned. You and I and every other person on the face of the planet, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 6 verse number 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. I want you to know that the Bible says the wage of sin. That means sin must be accounted for and paid for. And whenever you sin, just like you work and you deserve your pay, when you sin, you must be paid. And it's mandatory. The wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says if the wage of sin is death and all of us have sinned, that means all of us qualify to die. But here is the turnaround. Romans chapter 5 verse number 8. Romans 5 verse 8. The Bible says in propitiation, God gave himself for us while we were yet sinners. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were sinners. He did the dying. We did the sinning. But he died on our behalf. So when we put our faith in him, there is an exchange. Our sin and our guilt go to the crucified Lord. His righteousness comes to us. That is what faith in Christ does. And the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 3 and in verse number 16, the Bible says very clearly one of the most favorite verses of the entire world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life let me break that scripture down for you god loved the world we call that the motivation the thing that pushed god to provide a saving framework was his love for the world he was driven the love of god for us was the driving force that led Jesus to the cross of Calvary. For God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave. That is how he acted on his love. Prompted by his love for us. Not prompted by our prayers. Not prompted by our sacrifices. Not prompted by our pitiful state. But prompted by his love for us. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And then he gave the stipulation that whosoever, look at the scope of whoever can be saved, whosoever believes, that is what you're required to do, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Talking of everlasting life, that's the commodity Jesus came to give us. Save us from death and give us. It's what he saved us from, but it's also what he saved us to. It is not so much what he's delivering us from the death, it's also what he's delivering us to, eternal life. So we must celebrate both what he's saving us from, condemnation, separation from God, the futility of our actions, and saving us to eternal life. Life in Christ, abundance of life according to John chapter 10 and in verse number 10. In Romans again, chapter 6 and verse number 23, the Bible says the gift of God is life. The gift of God is life. And we come now to the Romans that we just read, chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says, believe Jesus with your heart. Confess him with your mouth and you shall be saved. Allow me to help you make that prayer if you don't mind and let this be the day you never forget. I invite you to make that prayer with me. Please pray with me. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I'm convinced God you exist. And that 2,000 years ago, you loved the world enough to send your son, Jesus Christ, to come and take away the sins of mankind. Today, I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I repent of my wickedness and I turn around and put my faith in the Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to take away my sins and ask you to impute righteousness upon me. From today, going forward, I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I am a child of God. I'm forgiven of you. Thank you for what you did for me. I appreciate and I put my total confidence in the finished work of the cross. And so today, I give my life to Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Allow me to pray for you. This is a powerful decision you just made. I pray the Lord will keep you. Father God, I pray for all my viewers, wherever they are, who have decided to follow this cue and listen to every word I've spoken and taken their time to painstakingly listen through. I pray, oh God, that today they have put their faith in you. I pray, Lord, that you receive them in the fold. I pray that you empower them by faith. I pray that they will grow to know you, to love you, and to serve you all the rest of the their lives. I pray that this is a decision that we never regret. Now that we commend them to you, we pray you, oh God, will keep them from falling and you present. The Bible says you are able to keep us from falling and to present us blameless on that glorious day. I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless all the viewers. You will keep them. You will sustain them. You will fight the battles for them. You give them victories they have never experienced before for the glory of your name. May this be a day they never forget. I bless you, Lord, and I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am so excited to welcome you to the family of faith. Wherever you are, I know it could be very far from where we are broadcasting. We pray that you'll find a Bible-believing church. You'll find a place where you can fellowship. And possibly after these pandemics are over, you will find and identify with a church, with a body of believers, and grow thereby. In the meantime, you can just stay tuned and be following us on this channel. We're going to give you materials that can help you in your faith to grow and also recommend several other channels that can be a blessing to you. Once again, it's been my honor to lead you to an abiding faith in Jesus Christ. I would want to see you again in the following broadcast. Shalom. Thank you so much. My name is James Timbetti, a pastor of Precious Faith Church. So honored. If you wish to reach me or to give us some feedback, we'll be so appreciative of that. Just if you can text or you can WhatsApp, it is 724 383 That again would be plus 254-724-383-873. Shalom. The Lord bless you. It is well. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, we bow our hearts.